Welcome to the Faith to You podcast. I'm Pastor Caleb Schrader, and we're continuing our Love Incarnate series. I introduced to you last week this concept that Jesus embodies all of the attributes of love. He not only sacrifices his body as an action of love, but he embodies all the attributes while he's making that sacrifice. So we, we went through 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verses 4 through 8, and we saw that every attribute of love, Jesus always manifested perfectly and continuously. So what I want to talk about this week is what it means that love is kind. Well, if love is kind, Jesus is kind. Jesus never stopped being kind. Well, we need to define our terms. What is kindness? Unfortunately, we live in a culture that defines kindness differently than God's word. In our culture today, kindness is defined as niceness. If you're kind to me, that means you're nice to me. And that's not really what kindness is. In, in Scripture, it's defined this way. Romans chapter 2, verses 3 through 5 says this, Do you really think, any one of you who judges those who do such things yet do the same, that you will escape God's judgment? Or do you despise the riches of his kindness, restraint, and patience, not recognizing that God's kindness is intended to lead you to repentance? Because of your hardened and unrepentant heart, you are storing up wrath for yourself in the day of wrath, when God's righteous judgment is revealed. In Romans 2, it defines kindness specifically as God staying his wrath, as God holding back his wrath. You see, every single one of us every day deserves to be punished for our sins, and God holds that back. For those of us who've given our life to Christ, that wrath is placed upon Jesus. But for anybody who hasn't given their life to Christ, that wrath is still restrained, so they have an opportunity to repent while they're still drawing breath. That opportunity runs out when they die. So God's kindness is manifest in his restraint. I want you to think about that in the life of Jesus. Jesus was perfect. Jesus could have demanded worship, adoration. Jesus could have instantly punished anybody who stood against him. But what did he do? He was kind. He had restraint. He held back the full brunt of his anger over sin. Jesus was perfect. Sin was terrible. In him was light and no darkness, and he dwelt among us. He dwelt among sinful people, and he exuded constant kindness. One of of the examples of this is in Matthew chapter 15 in the story of the Syrophoenician woman. Now, you might think that's a surprising illustration of Jesus' kindness because of the initial interaction. A Syrophoenician woman comes up to Jesus, and she asks him to heal her daughter who's demon-possessed. And Jesus essentially says, I haven't come for your people. I've come to the Jews. And he says, it's not good to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. You might think that's a really weird illustration of being kind. But the woman responds to that. She says, yes, but even the dogs gather the crumbs that are under the table. And then Jesus says this in Romans in Matthew 15, 28. Then Jesus replied to her, Woman, your faith is great. Let it be done for you as you want. And from that moment, her daughter was healed. So we see that Jesus was willing to be convinced. He came to the lost people. He came to the chosen tribe of Israel. But when the Syrophoenician woman came and she had a need, he was willing to reach out and to help her. Let let me show you an interesting parallel passage in Matthew also, chapter 4, verse 24. It says this, Then the news about him spread throughout Syria, so they brought to him all those who were afflicted, those suffering from various diseases and intense pains, and demon-possessed, and epileptics, and the paralytics, and he healed them. All of these people are brought to Jesus, and he heals them, and this is a manifestation of his kindness. Now, something I want to point out to you is the region. Do you hear how Matthew described it in Matthew 4, 24? He said throughout Syria. That's an interesting way to describe it. He didn't say throughout Israel. And that what that means is he's including Roman provinces as well as Jewish provinces. People are coming from all over. Jesus is healing people from all over. His kindness is demonstrated in his willingness to help anyone who is needy 
in front of him. Do you, do you remember what Jesus did after John the Baptist was martyred? Do you remember what he did? Well, he heard the news about John the Baptist being martyred, and then it says in Matthew chapter 14, verse 13, when Jesus heard about it, he withdrew from there by boat to a remote place to be alone. And that, that should make sense to you. If you lose a friend, if you lose a, a close friend, a dear friend, what do you want? You, you need some time alone. Jesus is a human. He's experiencing mourning. He's experiencing the hurt of having lost somebody he cared deeply about. And so he goes off to be alone. But listen to what happens. When the crowds heard this, they followed him on foot from the towns. When he went ashore, he saw a large crowd, had compassion on them, and healed their sick. Do you hear that? He had compassion on them. That's the manifestation, the embodiment of the attribute of kindness. Jesus is there. He's hurting. He's gone to be by himself. But there's people there and they need him. And so what does he do? He has compassion on them. And you remember what happens next? The people stay there. It gets late. He doesn't send them home. What does he do? He feeds 5,000 of them. He provides food for 5,000 people. Jesus exudes the attribute of kindness. Why? Because he loved his neighbor perfectly, constantly. So, so Jesus' kindness is manifested by his willingness to bear with others and sacrifice himself for their sake. Think about that. He had compassion for the hurts of others even when he was hurting. Now, you know, when you or I are hurting and we don't feel like making sacrifices for others, we're fallen humans. This is the creator of the universe. This is God in human flesh. This is the one who has every right to demand worship and service from his creatures. But what does he do? He humbles himself and takes care of their needs. You know, if we're going to follow Jesus, we need to humble ourselves too. When we don't feel like laying our life down for our brother, that's when the fruit of kindness needs to be manifest. That's when you put on display the attributes of love. Don't just think, I would die for somebody. Would you inconvenience yourself for somebody? Would you inconvenience yourself when you're really tired for somebody? That's love. That's love incarnate. That's love that the church still manifests today. So go out and love well with the attributes of love. Thank you so much for listening.